Hello, welcome to another petrol blog lockdown video. I say another, it's been a while. How long has it been? A month, maybe more since the last video. Um, you can blame many things for that, but um, there's been a bit of encouragement on Twitter. Uh, so thank you to uh, the likes of CJ and um, Mr. Road to Life for um, encouraging me to crack on and do a few more. We are perilously close to 1,000 subscribers now, although focusing on a car like the Renault Laguna is probably going to lose me a few hundred, especially those who arrived after the Mercedes video, because this is the, certainly on the fleet, this is the polar opposite of the, the 123. This is, well, for the international viewers, well, I suppose non-European viewers, this Laguna, which is the Mark II or Laguna II, is one of Europe's least reliable cars. Um, and we'll come on to a few of those issues in a minute. Um, so it's kind of apt that we started on, on the Haynes manual. And actually, it's one of the thickest Haynes manuals I've got or I've seen. It's like a, it's like a weighty tome. You know that scene in, is it um, Santa Claus or the Santa Claus? Yeah, the Santa Claus with um, Tim Allen. And there's that scene when, um, is it FedEx or UPS or one of the delivery companies arrives with boxes and boxes of Christmas lists. That's pretty much what happens when you, that's pretty much what happens when you order a Haynes manual for the Renault Laguna. Uh, a lorry arrives outside and it takes a few minutes or a few hours to unload them. Um, so this is the condensed version. This is the, the diet Coke version of the Haynes manual. And it's, um, I've noticed something today which I hadn't seen before, which I think is, is worth telling. There's a, they added an extra page on the inside front cover, um, which I think um, I'll let you read that for a moment. And um, what's interesting, you know, they have their difficulty rating. Uh, on the Laguna 2, they actually introduced a stupidity rating, and we've gone for the maximum five spanners. So you'd have to be a maximum spanner to buy a Mark II Laguna, certainly in 2020. But of course, this video is entitled Why I Bought a Renault Laguna Mark II. I was one of the... I went on the Honest John forum, which is, which is a mixture of insight and hyperbole. One of my favourite words, hyperbole, or hyperbole, as I used to think it was when I was a kid. Well, I'm, I'm a basically a sadist. Uh, I think the word, I basically said, if you buy a Mark II Laguna, you are a sadist. Um, you are gambling with your, with your money. But actual fact, I didn't, well, I spent a hundred quid on it. And that was the attraction for this car. I just want to point out one thing. It rocks the yellow fog light beautifully. Well, here's, here's a story. The guy, the guy selling it was moving to the Channel Islands and um, just wanted shot of it and um, my reputation preceded me and if I remember right it was July 2018 when I bought this so I've had it two years now and um, I actually well it was quite interesting because the guy wanted 50 quid for it and um, the wife insisted on on asking 100 pound for it so she was pushing the price up eventually we settled for 100 quid um, without the mat weirdly I had to buy a <laughs> this, is, this, is, yeah, this is how sad I am um, they, they were buying a Kia. I can't remember what Kia it was. Um, I'm going to say Sportage, but I don't think it was. It might have been a Sorento. But anyway, they bought a Kia. And they took the mats out of this. And um, I'm, a, I'm a saddo for originality. Even on the £100 Laguna, I'm a saddo. So I wanted those original, original mats. As you can see, those mats are looking resplendent, which is another word for, my, for the mugs. If I'm going to do mugs, Petroblog mugs, they're going to have remarkable or resplendent on them. Resplendent Renault. Remarkable and resplendent Renaults. The mugs will be in the shop soon. Um, trust, lost my train of thought. Yes, um, they, they wanted to keep the mats. Not for posterity reasons, just purely because they're moving to somewhere close to the beach and they knew they wanted mats and the Kia they were buying didn't have any. So I went out and bought off eBay um, a set of Kia mats. I think they cost 20 quid. So I suppose in actual fact it cost 120 quid if I'm being totally honest. But in terms of the purchase price for the car, it was a hundred pound and um and i'm going to say it right now just looking at that i think ignore ignore the dodgy bit of rust and the weld in there which is on the list of things to do uh, but i think that is a very beautiful no uh, I, I think beautiful is over, overplaying it i think it's a very elegant and um yeah elegant piece of work you've got to remember that in 2001 when this was launched forget that this is actually going back to 2001 you get these on an x-plate most of them are gone now. Um, 
for reasons that will become clear as we go through the car. But yeah, 2001, French car design was in a bit of a lull. Um, the 406, nice enough. Uh, I like the 406, but it was, well, it was pretty plain. Um, the Laguna Mark 1, again, big fan of the Mark 1 Laguna, but again, quite a plain and simple design. And even Citroen with the C5 was, was a bit dull. Um, okay, the XM was a different, different story, but you know, you look at the Safran on the part of the fleet, that was quite a conservative design, if I'm putting it um, nicely. Um, but this came along and it was, it was cutting edge, avant-garde. It was elegant. And I particularly like, again, it's that little things you don't notice until you own a car. You, the way the back window goes into the ray light there. I mean, any car designer watching this, hello, Matteo, um, are going to pick holes in this design. But I think that's an elegant piece of work, it, especially on those wheels. The wheels fill the arches nicely. And of course, we've got the, we've got the fridge freezer moustache. I call it fridge freezer moustache because it's that kind of material you pay extra for when you're buying a fridge freezer. Kind of brushed aluminium. That gives it a nice sort of moustachio look. But again, look at that. And here's the thing, and it almost goes back to the Renault 25 and it's actually quite a nice, with the original Renault 25, it's actually a really nice piece of design. I've got a bit of paper in my hand now because I'm going to come on to, because actually when it was launched in 2001, the, the automotive, I need to call it university press, the automotive press and media were pretty Bold over is not the word, not the phrase, but they liked it. Um, I remember Richard Hammond reviewing it for, for um, Men and Motors, remember that? That's where he cut his teeth. I'll put a link in the description. Um, he, he rather liked it. Um, and <laughs> it's interesting, you can see how quickly the media changed. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a quote here from Honest John, the man with a hat. Should you consider the Laguna 2 as a serious alternative to the new Mondeo and new Passat? And the answer is, of course you should. It's much better built than the troublesome Laguna One. If you value stunning looks, relaxed cruising at 70 to 80 miles per hour, decent seats, a comfortable ride, and lots of gimmicks above the fine handling and sheer driving enjoyment of the Ford or VW's aura of quality, then the Laguna Two beats both the Mondeo and the Passat. If we um just look, if we just look over there. It's um. Look at a bit wet over the moors. And so at any point in the moment, I'm gonna to have to rush into that car and close all the windows, which isn't as easy as you might imagine in a Mark II Laguna from 2004. Electrics aren't this car's strong point in general. And there are one or two niggles on this one, which will become apparent if I have to rush in and dive for cover in the, in the Laguna. So I'm gonna dive into the car now just in readiness in case um, Dartmoor drops its load all over our paddock. Um, and I will say that in the, during the lockdown, which is what, nine, eight, nine weeks now? No, it's 12 weeks now, isn't it? This, I've used this car more than any other. Um, off the road, obviously, because it's not MOT. It needs an ABS pump for the MOT, plus a few other things which I'm in the middle of sorting. Um, but we've used this, well, there's one thing you have to do every, every spring. After the um, winter, these fields get churned up by the horses. So we tend to use the, the D-Max to um, flatten it. But in this case, my oldest son had a really good idea. He said, why don't we use the use a Laguna? Because there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, it needs an ABS pump, but nothing's not stopping it being used. So I've used this car, I've probably sat in this car in total, probably about four or five hours worth. And it's re oh, and he said, remarkable again, those, those mugs are gonna have to come. Um, with great uh, hats, tip of the hat to David Coleman for oh, remarkable. Um, this is supremely comfortable. I mean, it doesn't waft, so it doesn't waft over a ploughed field. It doesn't waft in the same way as a, as a Safran, but the seats are brilliant and to totally, if, it, if ever this car is taken off the road and scrapped, I'm having these seats for the office because they are really, really good. And I think this was the time, wasn't it, when Renault were focused on safety and comfort. That, they were the two pillars, really, of its success. And, um, and actually the Laguna 2, you could argue, kind of kick-started a new era for Renault because, a good era for Renault, because following the Mark 1 Megane, which I like, but is again quite a conservative design, they follow that with the Mark 2 shaking that ass. And I'm going to write a feature on that soon for the blog because I think that's aging really, really well. And of course you had the, um, the, the Velsatis and you had the, um, the Avantime, Avantime. Um, so, yeah, Renault got its mojo back, almost kick-started by 
not kickstarted by the Laguna 2, but this was very much part of that new era. And here's the thing, this car, the Laguna 2, will be extinct. Much the same way as the Renault 25 is going and all the Renaults before it, this car, perhaps more so than any other, is going to be extinct because not only is it troublesome from a reliability issue, there's all the electrics. You know, so in the old days, going back before the Renault 25, I guess, but the electrics weren't so much an issue. They weren't as complex. On this car, the electrics are going to kill it. Um, and I know deep down, I know deep down that this car eventually is going to be put out to pasture. Find out if I parked it next to that field shelter. I should walk around, this is a bit dull. I, I parked it next to the field shelter last night and it was surrounded by long grass and I thought, yeah, that's kind of a hint into its future. That's a glimpse into its future, really, when it's going to be put out to pasture. And I know, I know deep down, that if you look at the fleet, this should not be prioritised over the Corrado, over the 406 Coupe or the AXGT. However, in my defence, in my defence, this car's working. Um, and I'm going to use it as a test bed because I need to start experimenting on my cars. I need to start doing more work on them. I'm in that kind of weird situation right now where I've got more time than ever before, but my freelance income is dropped to minimal. So I have no money to spend on the cars. And um, Petrolblog's not making any money now because the advertising's dried up. Uh, I obviously haven't got enough subscribers to earn any money from YouTube for what it's worth. So I can just do what I can. So I'm doing little things like removing seals. Um, yeah, we're in a dodgy situation now. So I know that this car shouldn't be here. This car should be scrapped. But I have a deep love for this car. Again, look at that. Look at the design of that. I love that. Sorry, I do. Um, I'm going to go back in because it's going to rain. So yeah, well, when I was earlier on, I was talking about the issues on this car. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Honest John. Well, of course you're familiar with Honest John website. But on the, for each car, there is a section called Good and Bad. And I think I touched on this back in the days when I first launched this this um, this channel. And there are there are good and bad. And in most cars, you get like a 50-50 share of good and bad, maybe twenty, maybe thirty, seventy, or forty, sixty. And this one, it's ninety percent bad. But what look what to look out for? And I've underlined some of the big ones in red. Worrying number of gimmicks from a company not known for high quality electrics. Um, heavily criticised by what car? Uh, oh, this is this is a good one. Apparently, the Isofix rear seat attachments are in the wrong location and had to be recalled to resolve. And there's a few examples of that on the car. Um, for example, I, I'll show you now. My car, I'll show you now. I keep diving in and out of the car. And um, a little drop of rain there, but we're, we're going to crack on. Little things like this. There's a little bit of seal. There's a seal there, and I don't think that's original. So you've got the door seals there, which I stripped off yesterday last night because the water was coming in here. And I, I figured that the water was actually getting stuck in there because of all the gunk and, and then falling into there. But that, <laughs> something else has happened which makes me laugh. I think that's, that's not original. And then my, I did all these seals because I, know, I get another problem because water gets stuck down here and you have all kinds of electric problems. And I removed all of these seals here. And I think it's there and there. There are two little bits of plastic trim which weren't part of the original design. So they've had to recall it or they've had to re sort of engineer it on the fly, if you like. And this is funny. Do you remember, are you, are you aware of the game Whack-A-Mole? Um, these doors are very much like the equivalent of the Whack-A-Mole because there's four of them. And they, can I just point out, you get these lovely, I love door lights. Door lights is a sign of class. You get them on the Laguna 2 in this spec, the dynamic spec. The Safran, you don't get them. And certainly not on my spec, on the executive spec. Not good enough. Like that. So works on that one doesn't work on that one and now this is the game of chance this is where the whack-a-mole is you never know which one's going to pop out or which one's going to light up so that one's not lighting up now it was last night this one's the omnipresent this one's always on yeah that one always works so at some point this afternoon we'll come back and we'll get three the maximum i've had it on at one time is three i'm going for four but at the moment i can only get past three i can't get past three so well, let's have a look. Does it? Does it? Stay? Do we still get the light? No, we still get the light. So actually, it's behaving itself. Oh look! Oh my! Well, this is this is unheard of. This is uncharted. This is. Oh, oh, I don't know. Oh no, no. It wasn't. Uh, see. Now we've only got that one. That one's gone out. So what happens is, 
This is the lagoon. This is the lagoon. This is French tat at its best. It gives with one hand. Oh, it's back on. You know, you just don't get that kind of game of fun. You know, the W123 doesn't give that level of entertainment. Your own little light show. All we need is some Jean Michel Jarre music and we'll have our own little disco. Um, yeah, going back to the list. As I'm digressing and this video is going to go on for an awful long time and people are going to start switching off. Right, I mean, this is just a, a hideous list. Joint second bottom to Espace in the 2002 Rich Reliability Survey. 80% breakdown free. Fourth bottom out of 137 models. Joint tenth bottom in 2004. I mean, it goes on. It goes on. I'm going to start rushing through this now because this is it's almost like Alan Partridge quoting from an Auto Express magazine. I mean, look at that list. There's a long list there. That's not a paragraph. That's a that's a whole chapter and verse of of issues. Uh, I will link to this. What's interesting? Uh, this this page is no longer on the website. I had to go through some sort of weird system to get to this. I think it broke the internet. The Laguna Two broke Aust Honest John's website because this page is no longer live. Oh, uh, this is this is my favourite one. This is my favourite one. Some dealers are now refusing to take this model Laguna in part exchange to retail because of the potential for expensive comebacks over electronic problems uh, you know in terms of cvs this car we well, wouldn't need to go on social media to find out this car's dodgy past would you i just looked how much time i spent on this video and it's very long and um, people aren't going to watch this entire video so i'm going to start to speed things up of course 2001 well, and it's 2004 when this car was launched this sort of thing didn't exist unless you had an s-class a keyless i say keyless you had to unlock the door using the um, using the buttons or I believe in Europe you could just walk up to the car and there was a transponder in there which would automatically um, lock the, unlock the doors as you walked up to it. In the UK I don't think the insurance companies like that which is kind of ironic now given that most cars have that now. Well not most cars, a lot of cars have that now. So a key card which is otherworldly in 2001. Um, some people hate it. I know um, Hubnut, Ian hates them. I actually really like it. Um, so you you're all familiar with this you put the key in there and it fires up all the problems because this is a mark ii laguna and um start the button start the button start the engine we'll fire the um the lights up because there are many good combinations in life morecambe and wise uh, gin and tonic strawberries and cream but actually i think one of the best combos in life <laughs> xenons and, and yellow fogs it's not the right it's a really really good look it's bad bad angle but it's a really good look um, there was problems with the self leveling on these as well which I've heard the, the um, auto dipping didn't quite work on these <laughs> the list goes on as you can see or as you can hear it's running um, how many lights we got at the moment one two three that one's never worked so we've got three out of four and um, you've got the familiar which I think this dates back to the Renault 25. I think that was the first car to have that. And it's still used today. If you look at the Alpine, it's still there. It's a good piece of kit. You've got the familiar hidden away. Oh. Um, stereo system and CD player. Um, the radio's working. Always has done. CD player's no longer working. It's, it's weird. The CD player stopped working. And also this cigarette light Oh my god what's that awful that's that's um all saints um that's not working which means i can't use the pure dab radio which is annoying because i've got no spotify although <laughs> this car's off the road at the moment so it's not not an issue um one of the best cup holders inspired by the saab but well it's a lethal weapon watch this i mean talk about shock tactics and it's very plastic compared to the Saab 95s that I remember. Um, you've got a sunroof. Properly big sunroof as well. So those of you familiar with the blog, you'll know that I um, was running a 508 SW for a few weeks. And actually, this is a better family car than the 508 SW. Okay, the 508 is a better looking car. It's better equipped. Well, it's actually better looking than most cars. It's a stunning piece of design. But as a family car, this is really good. It's light, it's airy. It's I know it's not hugely cavernous by, by estate car standards, but it's, it's big enough. And you get a properly sized sunroof. It's not some sort of token effort. It's a properly big, properly big sunroof. It, the light just sort of floods in and so does the water if you leave it open. And yeah, I mean, you can see the bodywork. 
isn't isn't the best this side's not too bad I mean I've got 10 yard cars on the fleet this is probably a 10 mile fleet car um, in terms of standing too close to it you've got a good sized boot detachable tow bar which came in handy when we were clearing goat poo out of the goat shelter so this was this car was going up and down the paddocks taking goat poo away again in supreme comfort and good look at this I mean proper what car levels of consumer advice but look at that low loading lip properly low that's what you want from an estate car the other thing you want from an estate car is a split tailgate so who needs a three series or a Range Rover when you've got a split tailgate however there is a but because the gas strut has decided to fail on me one thing I forgot to point out is well apart from the condensation the rear lights I don't know if you notice it here but there are some dead dead insects in here so if and when they decide to start up another Jurassic Park in the near future or distant future they can use the DNA from these flies to create animals my seats my seats in my is my is that seat in my position because there's not a great deal of leg room there is there it's very plasticky isn't it it's very gray and plastic everywhere um, unlike the Safran which hasn't got any squeaks or rattles this has got more squeaks and rattles than mother care um, yeah that's in my more in my driving position so not a huge amount of legroom they are nicely contoured seats to help I'm not going to shut the door in case a child locks tried to come on but they really went to town with the brochure it's a properly weighty tome I've used weighty tome quite I do get stuck in these kind of vocabulary ruts I look for the first time car manufacturer obtains the maximum score of five stars for three of its vehicles and uh, any points can you guess what those cars were well you don't need to guess most of you know the answer but if anyone give me the hat trick of five stars um, there'll be a packet of blog knobs in it as and when they get re redone so yeah I feel like I waffled a lot in this video and I don't know I said everything I was meant to say um, have I answered the question why I bought it? Well, I bought it because it was cheap and it's French and it's a lovely piece of design and it's something I hadn't owned and it's something I don't really want to part with now. And it's also now turned into something I can work on as a test for the more desirable members of the fleet. Um, I do, perhaps I need to do a, a poll on which car to start next, Corrado 406 or Citroen AX. Personally, I think I should start the 406. I think it's the one well, I owe it to the lady I bought it off a year ago, really, to get that started now. I, the excuses, are, I've got many excuses of why it hasn't started. Um, but let's just crack on with that. Let's get to a thousand subscribers. Well, I'll tell you what, when we get to a thousand subscribers, we'll start work on the 406. Is that fair? In the meantime, I'm going to close all the windows. Oh, I'll tell you, should we, should we close the windows together? Should we go on that voyage of discovery to see if the windows will close on the 100 pound Laguna? Because this is a game of chance. Left the keys in, so that's good. Key in. Right, so I won't, I'll just, I'll do that. Oh, she starts anyway, okay. Um, so, start with that window. Let's see how good this one is. Well, I think you described that as glacial. Okay, so that one's glacial. The back window. Lethargic, I describe that window as lethargic. And then the other back window, got that wonderful focusing technique. Oh, yeah, that's, I would say that's on death's door. So that's another description, death's door. And then the best, you'll like this one. I'll just focus the camera, you'll like this one. So yeah, you have to, it's semi-automatic. I'm sure it's a safety technique to make sure you don't trust, you don't um, stick your fingers in it and get stuck. Yeah. Oh, sunroof. Let me just close the cavernous sunroof. Oh, I, 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 there's so many things I wanted to say to you on this video and I keep losing my train of thought. Look at this, look at this a piece of originality. Do you know what, guess what this is? It's an accident management pack. So in this, back in the day, you got a disposable camera to take photographs of the car you bumped into, who, which wouldn't have had a five-star year end cap rating, obviously. 
Can you name the other two cars? They were indeed the, the Megane and the Velsatis. So in the pub quiz, it's getting hot in here already. When the pub quiz comes up um, and someone asks you to name the first manufacturer to get a hat trick of Euro end caps, you'll know the answer to that. You've got a pen, a pen which is stuck, quite literally stuck. It's a bit like the plastics in the in the um, Safran. It's gone sticky and horrible. Oh, Lord. oh, as you see, live on video, I've just broken, I've just broken the accident management pencil. Crayon, I've just broken it. I'm, I'm heartbroken. It's a little bit like the, I've got a crack in the Safran's windscreen, which the autoglass haven't come back to me about yet. Um, but anyway, look, you wouldn't know. Um, an accident management. Oh, look, you got a separate accident management line. If you owned a Velsatis, an Aventime, an Aspas, and a Clio V6. Do you know, there's a Clio V6 for sale this week, or it's going for auction, I can't remember when, £40,000. You know, does bring into question £100 cars. So yeah, look, an accident management pack which hasn't been used. What was in there? I do wonder what was in there. Hmm. Anyway, so yes, a bit of rare French history there. I've got a harbour fly in here. I'm going to... And um, yeah, you've got the original. Oh, it's a blast from the past. Hadaway, there he is. What is love? Well, one, well love is clearly a 100 pound Laguna. I think I was... I need to do more of these videos and I won't talk as much. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Stay safe.